let's get into it soul not for sale podcast i never thought i would see this podcast happen billy carson and joe rogan now i'll be honest i've known about billy carson for a long time i always see the instagram clips i'm sure a bunch of you do when you see his face i'm sure you'll be like i've seen this guy before but i've never got deep into his content i've never watched like an hour-long video of his or a documentary you know i've seen that he has i think he had a show on gaia there's a gaia network not fully sure, but he always has some wildly interesting stuff to say. And in this little segment that I'm bringing you guys right now, they're talking about something called a, uh, I think it's called the active denial system. It's very, very interesting. So I'm just going to play that. And they're also talking about, you know, they're talking about a bunch of different things. But Billy, Billy Carson's really into the Anunnaki and what was going on way, way before, before ancient Egypt that we all know of before even that he's always touching on these uh these topics always touching on the emerald tablets things of that nature so he's a very interesting guy and we're gonna hear Joe Rogan and him talk a little bit about some stuff right now and then I'm gonna play a bunch of videos for you guys of this active denial system I'm actually gonna show you some news reports that involve Peter Ducey because Peter Ducey was actually someone who tried this active denial system and then i'm going to show you a news article where they were considering using it for people who were protesting trump back when trump was president so we got some interesting stuff let's get right into it well it only makes sense if if terence is correct about this idea of the goldilocks zone it only makes sense and if there are other planets somewhere in another galaxy or ours that have the same exact sort of features mm -hmm. water the same temperature yep. the same mixture of amino acids and whatever the hell else is here that makes life yeah. and then it happens there too it just makes sense that some places are going to be more stable yep. so they're going to have less natural disasters so mm -hmm. like people will evolve faster and longer they'll, yeah. they'll exist longer but then you know there's the argument that the natural disasters are actually good because the natural disasters knock us back down mm -hmm. if we're about to destroy everything yeah. knock us back down to some much more primitive version of ourselves and then we have to rebuild society again yeah. over thousands of years which that's, that's to the exactly, universe is a yeah. blink of an eye that's a blink of an eye you're right that's exactly what happened in the emerald tablets you know 36,000 years ago though this uh, he arrives uh, in this place called the land of Kem ancient Kemet before it was known as Egypt his father sent them on a mission to rebuild civilization back up to a high level meaning that it already mm. was at a high level prior to this flood situation and he says he gets into the great ship of the master and he takes off into the sky until the earth disappears and then he goes to the point appointed and he sees beneath him the children of the land of Kem and he descends down he doesn't sail in he descends down and when the ship lands he opens his doors and he comes out with his crew and he says the barbarians came at him to attack him with cudgels and spears he says, I raised my staff and sent that array of vibrations, stopping him still as fragments of stone of the mountain. So he had a stun gun. He had a, a, a weapon that, that was, uh, you know, not root, not, not lethal, non-lethal weapon that can freeze you in your tracks. And we have something just like that now in the military called the active denial system. They can send a beam at a crowd coming to attack and make them stop still right in their tracks. They can make you feel like you're on fire, make you feel like you want to vomit. They can even put voices in your head. They can make you be in extreme, extreme pain. It's called the active denial system. So he's talking about technology back then that we have right now. Could do Dude, go look, look up that because is that do you think that's what that Havana syndrome thing is? It's possible, man. This thing, if this, if you put it above, like in, in the sky, and aim it at an area, and it beam spreads a little bit, you can create mass illness, mass sickness, mass uh, mass hysteria. You can have everyone running around thinking that they've got somebody talking to them and telling, commanding them to do certain things. Mm. It's, it, it's, it's out of control. This weapon can be fully weaponized in a lethal way, in a way that can make people become psychotic. You can make somebody think they're burning it on fire. Whoa! Active denial system demo. Can we listen to what this guy's saying? It can deter individuals on a military perimeter all the way up to a riotous crowd. All without permanent harm. It only penetrates uh, one sixty fourth of an inch of your skin. Goes very shallow uh, into where your nerve receptors are. Uh, I can't take the pain. There's no, Whoa. Uh, no permanent injury caused by it. Uh, so what does it do to them? It's on a frequency, a beam of frequency, just like Thoth says in the Emerald Tablets. I, I put this in my book because it's important. This the guests volunteer to test out its effectiveness and safety, including the Assistant Commandant of the Marine Corps. Wow, he said, <laughs> he said fuck it. He said fuck it. Assistant Secretary of the Navy. Most described it as feeling like a hot oven or grill being opened up. It is something that... Wow! Yeah. So that's what he used on them. Thousands of years ago. Holy yeah. shit. Or something like something like 2012? Yeah. Oh, now they turned you into a statue. Oh, yeah. Statue. Absolutely. No. 
<laughs> now it's over. It's Medusa. Yeah. Medusa. Yeah. Holy shit. Same type of technology. What do you Probably think Medusa was? Frequency technology. I mean, imagine that. Imagine yeah. that story. It, mm -hmm. We always thought that was just some crazy story. Yeah. But imagine there's a, a technology back then that can actually turn you into stone. Right. Now that we know that people can do things like that, and then we would imagine a thousand years of evolution, 10,000, 500,000, yeah. whatever these people are, yeah. whatever these things are that, are, that have the ability. It's kind of disappointing that they're still waging war, though. I got to tell you that. Yeah, it's crazy. That's it's, a uh, bummer. That's a real archaic mindset. You know, we have to find a way to rise above. This is why we need to understand exactly what happened and how do we overcome what's been embedded into our epigenetic memories because we're oh. suffering from epigenetic mental hysteria, which is psychosis and this war psychosis. We've been programmed as human beings to, uh, to have consumption and fighting and competition over collaboration. Yeah. Everything is designed to keep us separate. Divide and conquer is the main mission, and it worked so well for so many thousands of years. And this divide and conquer tactic that's been burnt into our DNA and our code has put us in a situation where we are not advancing as we should be. We're getting now this technology leaked out to us. And yes, that's advancing pretty fast. But consciously and spiritually, it's holding us back. But everyone's putting themselves in boxes and saying, I'm a part of this thing, and I'm a part of that thing. And then yeah. we don't work together. No, that's, that's such an important point, And it needs to be drilled into people's heads. Yeah. We're distracting ourselves by getting involved in these stupid arguments over stupid things right. when there's really important issues with the world mm -hmm. and those aren't being addressed and the, the, one of the big ones is how do you stop people from killing each other how right. do you stop war how, how do we stop this insane practice of having groups of people go up against groups of people they never even met and mm -hmm. killing them like, exactly and then we're all okay with this we talk about how this is normal and this has to be done and these yeah. war is ugly and it's unfortunate but mm -hmm. we have to do it like yeah. okay are you fucking sure who's <laughs> who's pulling the strings here people with ten thousand dollar suits that don't get on the front line yeah they send poor kids and young kids, young men and women to die. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, they exactly. Say, and it's and all about money. It's all about money. And, you know. So it's very, very interesting, right? This whole uh, act of denial ring. Now, what I went and did, okay, I went and found the exact video that Jamie was looking at, okay? The video is from 2012, March 9th, 2012. So it's anniversary passed recently, actually. Now, here's the thing. Here's the thing. And I have other videos, too, that, you know, seem different. This doesn't seem real. Now, it is a kind of directed energy weapon. I mean, you know, I mean, I know I know that falls under the realm of conspiracy so much so, you know, but it is and they are working on things like that. So it is very possible. But I just noticed something when I was watching this video here. Let me play this. It can deter individuals on a military perimeter all the way up to a riotous crowd. Okay, now watch this. Look at this guy right here. You can't see him yet. All you can see is the top of his hat. Watch what goes on with these guys, right? They're all moving. That one, oh wait, is it that guy? So this guy doesn't, it's like he didn't get the memo to run. I think it's this guy. Yeah, look at him. Look. So they're, they all run. Look, everybody runs except the guy who wasn't paying attention. It's very weird. And then I wish I could, actually, I can slow it down. I actually can, how about that? Oh, we're getting high tech now, folks. I'm gonna slow it down. Make sure you can see him a little more in the end. He just starts smiling. Like right away, he starts smiling. It just doesn't seem exactly real. But I will say once again, I do believe that they could do stuff like this. It's just that, just that little thing right there. He just did not seem like he got the memo like everybody else did. Everybody else knew we're supposed to run when it hits a certain time. And he's just like chilling. And if you notice, he looks away. He looks away and then everybody runs and he's like, oh, shoot, we're supposed to run. OK, let's go. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just saying. I'm just saying we're in the realm of directed energy weapons. Everything's possible. Billy Grant, Billy Carson's on the podcast. So we're talking about Anunnaki and Emerald tablets. You know, you got to stay open when Billy Carson's on a podcast. You got especially when it's with Joe Rogan. You got to stay open. I, I just noticed that little thing there. Now, let me play the rest of the video at normal speed. Unmute this thing. Let's go. Uh, and there's no. Uh, no permanent injury caused by it. Uh, very safe system. We've built in some safety margins and uh, uh, training for the operators. They even let any of the guests volunteer to test out its effectiveness and safety, <laughs> including the Assistant Commandant of the Marine Corps, Sergeant Major of the Marine Corps, and Assistant Secretary of the Navy. 
Most described it as feeling like a hot oven or grill being opened up. It is something that. So I'm going to also play Peter Ducey. Peter Ducey, if you guys don't know Peter Ducey, Peter Ducey is the person who is constantly giving hell to Biden's press secretary, uh, Kareen, Kareen Jean, mean Kareen Jean, lion machine, never answers a question no matter what is asked of her. Now, Peter Ducey used to be on the field, in the field, running around for Fox, and uh, this is no different. Let's, let's check it out. Pentagon has a new tool to ease tensions with crowds, but they're not using it just yet. Peter Ducey in advance tries it out for himself. You can't see it, hear it, or smell it, but it makes unruly mobs do this. The Defense Department's active denial system, a non-lethal weapon that can be used to control crowds, secure perimeters, and keep pirates at bay. It could be a game changer. This is one of the things that we can shoot first and ask questions later. Uh, normally you can't do that. The military says the active denial system is not radioactive, it's not a microwave, and it's not a laser beam. It's instead a man-sized beam of millimeter waves that can be fired from up to a thousand meters away that are designed to get the subject, whoever's standing on this X, really, really hot so that they move. And it's about 50 degrees out here right now, but I just felt like it was about a thousand and I've never been inside a tub that somebody dropped a hair dryer in, but I would imagine that that's what it feels like. Uh, young Peter Ducey, look at this guy, huh? Wow, young Peter Ducey, slim back in the day, Peter Ducey. This is 12 years ago. So here's the thing. Why is the military showing the people via mainstream media what they're going to be using on crowds seems a little weird yo can you imagine hey uh doing a report here they got these new things called rubber bullets gonna check this thing out i got a little vest on here oh wow i felt you'd be like what why are they showing how they're gonna use rubber bullets it's just, it seemed it just seemed very odd the whole thing seemed very odd the people at the beginning they're obviously i'm not gonna say they're actors i'm not gonna say that but they're literally guys who are there to be like, hey, hey, I'm a protester. Hey, what's going on? And then they all run. It's like, okay, okay. The, here's the thing, though. 12 years ago, me? You could have got me with that. Today, today when I'm watching Chris Cuomo say a bunch of lies and then leave CNN and be like, I didn't say any of that and see all this stuff recanted by the mainstream media, none of them will apologize. To see all that now? And now you're like, hey, you know, they got this. Yeah, you know what? I kind of don't believe you. I'm just I'm just saying. For me, I'm a little skeptical of it. A little, but I'm still open. I'm still open because Billy Carson. And also, they brought it up again. This video is called Feds Consider Using Heat Ray on DC Protesters. And this is not like some person made a video. This is, well, I'm... It's WUSA. It's from three years ago. It's not even like it's 12 years ago, like before. And it's for the DC protesters that were always giving Trump a problem. They were considering using this on these people and they talk about it. So listen to this. It was the chaos that played out on June 1st. Protesters pushed out of Lafayette Square, seemingly without any warning, all just minutes before President Trump made his way through the park to take a picture in front of a historic church nearby. <laughs> But a few hours before that, a military whistleblower says the Defense Department was searching for an unusual device to control crowds, asking if the D.C. National Guard had an active denial system in its possession, known as a so-called heat ray. It's a device that emits so much heat, it makes it feel as if your skin is on fire. The beam produces an intolerable heating sensation. Com so... It's very interesting there. It's just a little bit of uh, copyrighted music I didn't want to play there here. Tales also saying federal officials were stockpiling ammunition ahead of the incident. That same committee is investigating the use of force against crowds in Lafayette Square that day. The heat ray is a device that is unpredictable. It's why the military has even been reluctant to use it, according to a 2018 New York Times report. DeMarco's account contradicts repeated claims from the Trump administration that protesters were violent Tear gas was never used, and they were given warning after warning to disperse. 
So that was way back in the day, back when they didn't want Trump to take that picture. I remember that time where they didn't want him to take that picture. I think he had a Bible in hand as well, which, of course, nobody liked. They're like, oh, white nationalist president, how dare you? How dare you? The word of God in your hand. Anyway, <laughs> things haven't changed. They're still upset about that. But I just find that whole thing very, very interesting. Now, they brought up Havana Syndrome. Have you guys heard of Havana Syndrome? That's another thing that they brought up. And I got to say, all in all, I don't know if I believe this whole denial, Ray. I just I find it very questionable that they're showing people, hey, we're going to use this. And here's the thing. The claims that Billy, uh, Billy Carson made about causing mass sickness and mass hysteria, that's not true. That Ray... That particular one, I don't know what else there is, but that particular one can't do that. It can't cause mass sickness. It can just make you hot as if you, you know, you open the door. And then again, they explained it perfectly. You open an oven door and you're like, ah, oh, oh. it's like that. But six feet by four feet just hitting you like a wall. So my thing is, why haven't they used that? It would be a really easy thing to use. Like, think about, think about the pro, think about any protest, any of them, where they don't want you to go to a certain place. They could just set that up, and now when you walk towards it, you just feel heat. There's no need for rubber bullets. There's no need for tear gas. There's no need for smoke. There's no need for violence. You just have those set up. Hey, guys, you know what this is. And you can just move it forward ever slowly and just get people to disperse, just like that. It seems like it'd be way simpler. Why wouldn't they use that? And wouldn't they have it improved by now since it's been active? You know, apparently, I don't know if they stopped trying to, you know, make this thing better. But for 12 years now, I just, I don't know. Very, very skeptical of, the, here's the thing, not skeptical so much of Billy Carson, you know, because I don't know his content all that well, right? But I've heard him talk and it's the Anunnaki and I know about that. So I, I understand his vibe, right? Very skeptical of the mainstream media and the military working in tandem to be like, let's show the people what we got to disperse crowds. It's like, what? Why? Anyway, let's get into Havana syndrome. If you don't know what that is, this falls under what Billy Graham was talking or sorry, Billy Graham. I keep thinking Billy Graham. Billy Carson was talking about in regards to mass sickness because it actually kind of did this and it's doing it just to U.S. officials in this story, at least. Let's get into it. Let's uh, take a look at another uh, story today. The Kremlin has dismissed a media report that links a Russian intelligence unit to so-called Havana syndrome. That's a mystery illness which has affected U.S. diplomats. An investigation by The Insider, Der Spiegel and CBS alleges that the Americans were targeted with directed energy weapons. One victim of the syndrome, an FBI agent, told 60 Minutes about her experience of being hit by a powerful force while at her home in Florida in 2021. And bam, inside my right ear, it was like a dentist drilling on steroids. That feeling uh, when it, that it gets too close to your eardrum, it's like that, you know, times 10. It was like a high-pitched metallic drilling noise, and it knocked me forward at like a 45-degree angle this way. Well, the syndrome was first identified in Cuba's capital city in 2016 when U.S. diplomats complained of dizziness, headaches and a painful sound in their ears. U.S. officials have previously said it's unlikely a foreign power is to blame. The Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov says the new accusations are unfounded. It is absolutely not a new issue. For many years, an issue of so-called Havana syndrome has been played up in mass media. Often it was connected with accusations of Russian involvement, but no one has ever published or expressed any convincing evidence of these unfounded accusations anywhere. Well, let's speak now to news reporter Steve Dorsey, who broke the story of the syndrome affecting U.S. personnel in Cuba in 2016 for CBS and has covered development since. Steve, good to have you with us. Uh, named for uh, the the uh, Cuban capital, where it was first reported, but this has cropped up in, in various other locations as well, hasn't it? Absolutely. We've been uh, hearing over the, over the years of cases spreading throughout China, originating first in Guangzhou. We've been reporting on, uh, on at least one case in Uzbekistan. Now we're hearing from 
uh, 60 Minutes uh, and, and other reporters that there have been cases in Ukraine, in Germany, and now the Pentagon and the White House confirming that last year at a NATO summit, uh, a senior DOD official, a Pentagon official, had similar symptoms as this uh, purported uh, Havana syndrome, which the federal government here in the U.S. is now calling anonymous health incidents. That's a evolution of what were first described as health attacks by the U.S. State Department. Uh, so far, though, not much more information publicly revealed. By Very interesting. That's the Havana syndrome. I had never heard of that until Rogan just brought it up. It was very... Now, that falls under some odd stuff, right? Especially the fact that, you know, U.S. officials, that's where it started, hit some more U.S. officials actually and then it's going everywhere i think he even named china it's going everywhere but russia or maybe russia's just not telling anybody because that would be the smart thing you go and you try to hit somebody with some some thing and then they don't say anything and you're like oh man it must have not worked like russia's russia maybe russia's the smart one they're like mm, nothing happened meanwhile they have massive headaches they're those type of people they're just like i'm just gonna grunt through this headache I'm not gonna let them know. I'm not gonna let the let our people know what. We don't let our people know anything. That's just how Russia operates. But here's the thing: when it comes to this whole uh, denial system, this active denial system, it actually reminds me of something. And I think Billy Carson's right. I think this has been around for a long time. And I found some clips of where I've seen it before. Check it out. Oh yeah, that's it for sure. Have you guys not seen this? Oh my gosh. She, see what I mean? She ha oh my gosh. Pick that gentleman up. Whoa. Guys, I think we stumbled onto something here. There's more. <laughs> Whoa. This guy is the denial system. Whoa. Jeez. Take it easy on him, man. Whoa, so this he's, this guy is using what, exactly what Thoth did. Even more advanced than Thoth because it's in his hand. Oh, man, do we have any more of that? Oh, jeez. Whoa. Oh, my gosh. Whew, that's a powerful man right there. Right there. Check that out one more time. Whew. That gentleman. Chuck Norris has nightmares about that gentleman. <laughs> but honestly, when I was watching the first video of this denial system, that was the first thing that came to mind. I'm like, oh, it's like the fake Kung Fu masters. I'm like, it's like this. I'm like, Joe Rogan himself is the one that showed me this stuff. These fake martial arts masters talking about they can move people with their hands and this and that. And please save me the comments about how it's real. Please save me the comments about how it's real. I'm sorry. I've seen too many of those guys get beat up by MMA guys to, to think that it's possibly real. No offense. Anyway, that's all I wanted to bring you guys. It's very interesting stuff that they're talking about. But here's the thing. Here's what I'm going to say before I go. Give me one second. They're talking about the Emerald Tablets. Okay, they're talking about what happened 36,000 years ago, which Billy Carson can't possibly know. They're talking about Thoth. They're talking about some wild stuff. Why can't Joe be this way with Eddie Bravo? Am I the only one that sees? Why can't he be like that with Eddie? Billy Carson says some stuff, and Joe just goes, wow. Oh, geez. Why can't Joe look at Eddie like that anymore? You know what I mean? Joe used to look at Eddie like that. Now he gets all mad when Eddie has something to say. I'm just saying, man. These guys were, they were a podcast legendary duo. And now it's just, Joe just gets so angry at him whenever he's on the podcast. He doesn't even come on the podcast anymore. What happened? Why can't Joe look at Eddie Bravo the way that he looks at Billy, Billy Carson? Why can't he do that for us, man? Legendary podcast we're missing out on here. I'm telling you, don't get mad because Eddie brings up space being fake. Like... Just roll with it, man. Jeez. I'm just saying. Because Billy Carson comes up with some stuff in this podcast. And a lot of things he says, he'll just be like, 
recently discovered. And Joe's just like, wow, wow, recently discovered, you say? Hmm, that's crazy. But do your boy like that. Come on, Eddie. Let Eddie have some time like that. You know what I mean? Let Eddie talk for a couple of hours. No fact check. That's all we're asking for as fans. I can't be the only one that wants to see that. Come on, whatever. Whatever. Anyways, guys, <laughs> like, subscribe, turn on the notifications. Helps the channel tremendously. Other than that, I'm out.